Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth, another podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. Every week we have a different topic and tonight's topic is past lives. I'll just mention that you'll hear another voice and that's the voice of Charlotte Spicer who is a guest producer for this show. Welcome to the show. What's your name? Hi, I'm Tanika. Hi, Tanika. And what is your question, dear? calling in to see if I would hear from past loved ones, but basically this general will be fine with me. Okay. So that a past so life? Yes, um, nope. loved one that has passed. Right, but we're talking about past lives today. Did you want yes, to ma'am. try to figure out about a past life and a situation in your life that's currently going on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What would you like to, do you want to just go general, Dr. Leslie? Yes. Okay. Sure. It looks like you're going through an enormous amount of growth right now in your current lifetime. Have you you had some losses very recently in your life? Yes, ma'am. Right. And it it looks like those losses that you've had very recently in your life have just really thrown you into a huge growth period. Because I and I'm and I'm seeing that on the one hand. It's an opportunity. On the other hand, I'm seeing at the moment you're just, your energy is feeling quite, what shall we say, disassociated or diffused because of the, I guess, the, the shock of the losses. And it's sort of like, well, where does that leave me now in, in, in my life? So I'm going to take a look at, see if there's a past life that can help us with some of this. And there's a few lighting up, and so I'm going to go to one that is a relatively recent past life and take a look at what's going on. Hang on. I'm seeing you also in a male body, and I'm seeing you working on the railroad system. And it looks like it's in North America when they were originally laying the railroads in North America that you were somebody that worked on actually laying the railways. It looks like really hard work. So not much pay, you know, and you're in a group of people who are struggling. And something is coming up. looks like there's a, a person who worked on the railroad with you who, I mean, basically what happened was that they fell ill and passed away while they were working alongside you. So it looks like they had some kind of a funny turn and you, it was a friend, a really close friend of yours, like a buddy that you worked with every day and it even looks like the, the lodgings that you had, you, you kind of bunked together as well. And so I see you giving this person, you know, like water from a tin cup and he sort of sits on the side of the thing and that, but, but I, I'm seeing that he basically was just stretched off from one day at work, he just collapsed and passed away. And it looks like you, neither of you were very old when that happened, but he may be in your 30s. And it, it just shocked you to the core because you hadn't expected it. It's just like one minute your best friend was there and the next minute they weren't. It took a, a a lot of adjustment to them not being there, but it also made you question the nature of life and death and reality and also made you question your life and what am I doing with my life and how am I spending my life and I and I, I want to make it better because one minute you're here and one minute you're not, as happened to your friend. So I, I'm seeing that from that, that moment in that lifetime was a pivotal moment that actually changed your thinking about your own existence and your own mortality and actually caused you then to make some changes in your life. And, and, I, and I'm seeing that 
it took a few years, but you actually, um, because it looks like, um, as they were building the railroads, you were sort of traveling as the railroad was traveling kind of thing. But, but anyway, it looks like you got out of that life, but somewhere along the line, you stopped and got some different work in a new town, eventually ended up making something of yourself, eventually ended up having, you know, a, a family and a home and um, it always was down to that moment of that friend passing away in front of you that caused you to reflect and make that change. Now, how does that relate to what's going on with you in the current life? Well, I'm seeing that you're just in a very similar growth period that, the, 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 and you didn't mention... Who 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 is it that passed away in this lifetime recently? Um, my grandfather passed away um, on Thursday, and on Wednesday night, I had a dream that um, I passed away, and I saw my husband uh, in a lot of pain, and it was just ironic that that dream happened and then the day after my grandfather passed. Right. So I'm seeing that the man that I just was talking about in that past life was your grandfather. And, and I think so, it was because he worked on a railroad. Right. So that was, oh, very interesting. Yeah, so it was. It, I'm getting shivers. So it was your grandfather, and so your grandfather passing away now in this life that has triggered, I guess, in a way, there's a resonance, there's a connection with that prior life where he, you know, you were a friend of his and he passed away. And on both occasions, it has stimulated you into massive spiritual growth about yes, the nature of I life like, and death. I feel like now... Um, after that dream, I felt like that was a wake-up call for me to rededicate my life and my um, spirituality with God and and everything to to just try in within this life frame to do better than what I am because it seems like I keep running into this wall where I can't just get ahead. So right, exactly. So it's it's a mirror. It's a it's it's a very similar situation to the one that I just read in that past life. And exactly, you're using your grandfather's death in exactly the same way as a, as a spiritual wake-up call to get you to question things and to get you to make some changes in your life direction. Okay. Very good. So I hope that that's helped you, Tanika. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Tanika. Good luck, and we're sorry to hear about your grandfather, but we know he's with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Interesting that, yeah, the yeah. grandfather was the friend, and that was that's why I was kind of feeling that. I didn't want to interrupt, but then it came out, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, well, and it's, it's probably worth us pausing and mentioning here to the people who are listening in. We tend to incarnate together with our soul group. Mm -hmm. So if you look around your life right now, the people in your life are not strangers. They're not somebody that you've met for the first time in this lifetime. They're people that you've known through many lives, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 it's, it's very common obviously, to, to meet characters we know now in our past lives and for the relationships to maybe be a little bit different as well. Sure. And I'd also like to add that um, sometimes we come in to learn about a specific situation, such as death. Like Tanika obviously um, had that focus uh, in that past life because of the shock of the sudden loss of the best friend. And you start to wonder, you know, why did God take this person from me? And if you have, at the end of your life, these resonating thoughts of confusion or resentment or, you know, a lack of forgiveness and understanding, then you generally choose to say, well, let me explore that again or again. And in my life, death played a role in an interesting way and caused me to sit up and pay attention to it. 
And then, you know, just when I really thought I understood it completely, someone passed away tragically in my life and ripped everything in half. So I had to, I went through the grief cycle very thoroughly, shall I say. And I have it on good authority that death will no longer play such a prominent um, position in my life because now I do understand it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very interesting. So it could be uh, that people come, they want to learn more about money energy, they want to learn about life and death, they want to learn about sexuality. So it could be um, right. a resonating theme. All right, let's move on to exactly. area code. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add to that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was going to add to that, and I was just going to say that, um, you know, the, I also often will see that somebody will, you'll come in multiple lifetimes on the same scene, but each lifetime you might be seeing it from a slightly different perspective. And the mm -hmm. example there is, you know, a lifetime as a um, an invalid. And you might be learning all about receiving. You put yourself in a situation where you're forced to, to, to receive. And yep. then you might have another lifetime where you're a nurse or a mother or a physician where you are giving. And over those two lifetimes, this is a simple example, but over those two lifetimes, you're balancing your giving and receiving and you're expanding your consciousness on that polarity of giving and receiving. And we could make up an example for pretty much anything at all mm -hmm. um, to describe, to, to exemplify what, I, what I'm saying there. Yes. there's. I mean, there's millions of examples because there's limitless lives and situations and uh, the players in our lives, the people who sign up to help us learn these lessons. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. Tanika and her grandfather said, well, let's do this again, and I'll be the grandfather, you be the granddaughter, and then we get to, you know, work through this again. I gave a reading to someone many years ago, and it was interesting you mentioned invalid because in the past life, she was a male, she was an invalid from the age of, like, 15 to her death. And in this life, once I once I uncovered how she became an invalid in the past life, and I get a keyword when I do a past life reading, like your keyword, her keyword was mobility. And mm. I took it to mean her ability to move to a new residence. I, I just That's what my brain told me, not my intuition. I just said, okay, that must be what this is. But as I went through the past life and how she became an invalid and um, a paraplegic, Turned out in this lifetime, she's had trouble walking all her life. There's pain that runs down one leg. Doctors could never find any cause. So that that solved that, that mm -hmm. little mystery. Well, let's go back to the phones. Uh, the new lineup is area code 509, then 562, 917, then 716. We'll get to you as soon as possible. And bringing you live on the air, area code 509, welcome to the show. What's your name? Good afternoon. Um, thanks for taking my call. My name is Erica, and I kind of want to know, like, a past life, um, like, experience. Who was I? <laughs> well, let's take a look. <laughs> let's take a look, Erica, at you. First thing I want to say is, and this applies to anyone calling in today, basically, you've all had lots of past lives. <laughs> We're just picking one out of literally, you know, maybe thousands. So, um, so that's the first thing, but I will pick out one. And again, as with the others, I'm just going to quickly check in with you um, and the current spiritual growth cycle, the main spiritual growth cycle that you're in. Yeah, and um, because I... I know that our souls are eternal, right? But then, like, yes. um, that means that we have so many lives. But then, like, what is the completion? Like, I know that there is a point where it's like you already learned everything you should, and then, like, what happens to us? Well, my perspective is that we go on expanding <laughs> always. That's kind of what the game is. Now, I, I, I believe that you reach a point where you might, 
choose um, different experiences than in this physical three-dimensional reality. But actually, in actual truth, you already are. Because the truth is, you are an eternal, multi-dimensional spiritual being. And what that means, what that means is, um, my favorite way of, 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 of explaining past lives to people is to, is this, to use the analogy of, um, a disco ball, right? You've seen those disco balls with all the mirrors, and then there's all the little lights moving around on the floor. If you think mm -hmm. of the disco ball as though it was your soul, and the little lights that are moving around on the floor, as, the, as your lifetimes. Now, each lifetime exists within three dimensions, you know, exists within time and space. And there's the illusion that there's a little spot of light before it that is a past life and a little one in front of it that is a future life. But from the perspective of the soul, where there is no time and no space, there's, there is no past, there actually is no past or future. There's just what that soul is creating. But what, you know, and some of the creations of that soul are projections into physical reality, one of which is, you know, uh, Erica right here, right now. But yeah. you're, also create, you're also creating on other planes of existence, on other dimensions of reality, from the perspective of your soul. So, it's very hard to explain um, these concepts from the mm -hmm. human mind to the human mind, because we do tend to think in a very linear fashion. But my perspective is that you are experienced, you are put, you are projecting aspects of your consciousness in order to have different experiences so that you can contribute to the expansion of everything. Because mm -hmm, then you get into like we are all one, and then it's like, kind of doesn't make sense, and it's because we, on our previous lives, like, we can be a male or a female, like, and all that, you know, what about, never mind, I don't want to get into that, like, I have so many questions, but I'd rather get into my life. Yeah, I will, look, I will look at your life, but you're right, yes, I mean, ultimately, yes, we are all one, and mm -hmm. that's, oneness is an aspect of the heart chakra, and actually, so you can tune into that oneness through your heart chakra. And one of the things that that will do for you is it will help you to see where you fit as a projection of individuated consciousness amongst that whole. Because in these lifetimes that we're living now on Earth, we've individuated ourselves, we've purposely separated ourselves from the whole and focused ourselves into this uh, three-dimensional reality precisely because there are experiences that we can have here that we can't have anywhere else. We're, we're, we're on the cu cutting edge of, of, of the universe here on planet Earth in this heavy three-dimensional reality where we've... Was, because it, 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 it's, it's the difference of like really, really focusing on something very specific versus being merged in with everything. Um, and so you're like a like a lens on something specific is what you're doing by projecting this life. Anyway, let's that that's a little bit of a, an aside. But let's take a look at um, you in the current life and um, and also in the past life. Mm -hmm. So in the current life, the, the growth cycle that I'm seeing you in actually it has to do with making choices and. So you're towards the end of the current growth cycle, and we go through many cycles of growth and change in any one lifetime, towards the mm -hmm. end of this current one. And it's sort of like you've been exploring different things that might bring you joy, that might make you happy. And it's sort of like you've had your fingers in many different pies, and now it's like, you know, I think I need to choose. I need to choose. And... Um, <laughs> And so it's choosing on the basis of, it, it, and so some things are coming up, it's like how to choose. And, and my guidance would be to choose the thing that gives you the most joy. But some other things that are coming up is, you know, fear of choosing the right thing and programming about what you ought to do versus what you really would like to do. Mm -hmm. So that's where you are right now. Let's look at a past lifetime that actually maps to that experience. Well, everybody, everybody phoning up is, is, 
I'm seeing them in a male body, and this, um, it doesn't mean that you haven't had female bodies and male bodies and all sorts, but the, the lifetime that I'm seeing is um, somewhere in the ancient, in the Orient. And have you ever seen films where they carry the emperor around in like a box? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's sitting in the box and it's got handles and there's sort of like servants sort of carrying him around. Right. Seeing you be sitting in, inside one of these boxes being carried around. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and it looks like um, you, obviously you were somebody quite important. And so I see that where you, it's like a, your own personal taxi cab, but it looks like where it takes you is matters of state, places where you're having to go and have, have a public appearance, make an announcement, uh, you know, read a, a, a speech of some kind. And so it looks like there's a certain degree of etiquette and a certain degree of expectation and a certain degree of let's call it like ritual. It's just like you're 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 fulfilling a role and there are expectations that go with that role and you know and you know and you kind of you just you have to do them and get on with them. And so I I'm seeing in that lifetime you were your your self expression and your creativity was very much limited by expectations of others. Because it's like, it's like you couldn't say, well, I just feel like staying at home today because there was an expectation of you in the position that you were in that you couldn't just stay at home today. This is what you had to do. Um, yeah. And so, and so, uh, and so the symbol of being in a box is actually quite apt because it was like you were literally and metaphorically in a box. Um, and, 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 and that lifetime you chose on purpose because you wanted to experience what it was like to be limited by all of those expectations. But the current lifetime feels like you're really wanting to break out of that box, which is where you're at now. Where you're at now is I want to make the choices that feel good for me, not the choices that meet with the expectations of others. That's so true. That's a nail? <laughs> Sounds like that's a nail, yeah. huh, Erica? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting, Emperor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. Again, you can see the contrast between limitation and freedom and wanting to spread your wings and fly, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, this life, I'm pretty much, like, you know, if I want it, like, I'll really work for it and I'll get it. Like, because I'm a female doesn't mean I can't take on guy jobs, you know? <laughs> okay. um, like, in government and things like that, so, yeah. Rock on, uh, yeah. Well, I hope you um, make make the choice that brings you the most fulfillment and, and helps others at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah. Okay, then. Well, thank you for your time. Um, I, it was a shocker that I was, like, an emperor, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
I can see the, the feeling of struggle that you're talking about. And the major growth cycle that I'm tuning into has to do with affinity and self-love. So it looks like you're at the very beginning of a growth cycle where the objective is to expand how much you love and accept yourself. But right now, because you're at the beginning of it, you're getting into judging yourself. Well, and it also looks like you had some external influences from other people where they have judged you a lot, which has made you feel unloved also. And so I'm seeing that in the current growth cycle, you're wanting to deal with those things. And I'm going to look for a past life that relates to this. I am seeing you in the French court. So if you've ever seen any of those old movies where it's like, I don't know, they're all wearing powdered wigs and their faces all made up and this kind of thing. And But again, you are in a male body, but you are wearing a gorgeous outfit and a wig and you've got makeup on and you you it looks like you are oh you know what you are you're some kind of a uh, someone who who helps adorn the ladies but I'm seeing you with perfume and squirting perfume and uh, uh, on them and you know and helping them powder their wigs and this kind of thing. So you're very um, creative and artistic, and also to be honest, you look a little bit gay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little, a little bit of you know, um, very ebullient and enthusiastic, and really love fiddling with the ladies' hair and their outfits and all of this. And, and in that lifetime, you helped them look gorgeous. And, of course, they wanted to look gorgeous because they wanted to be loved or wanted to at least be found sexually attractive. You were getting them ready for balls and different social occasions and um, making them look irresistible. And you poured your whole life into helping other people attract a mate, you know. On the surface, you were always really happy, and but but underneath, you wanted some of the same things that these ladies that you were working on wanted, but you felt that you couldn't have it. And and part of the reason was I'm seeing that you were actually homosexual, you were gay, and you know, and that's part of what made it difficult, although not impossible. And seeing in those days that that was quite actually, you know, something that may not even have been swept under the carpet quite as much as it has been in recent years in, you know, in our current existences. But, but anyway, it, 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 it looks like it just made things a bit more difficult for you. It may not have yeah. been, um, received well in society being gay and hundreds, like, 200 so years ago. Yeah, some judgment and some also feelings of not being accepted. Not being accepted by others and also some of that that you internalized. So again, I'm seeing that the current growth cycle in the current life directly maps for that past life because you're embarking on the beginning of a growth cycle where you're wanting to love and accept yourself more and wanting to work through any of your own internal self-criticism and also any judgment that is coming at you from other people to be able to withstand that and and realize that it's more their problem if they're judging you than it is yours. So, so, so yeah, there it is in a nutshell, a growth cycle about loving yourself and accepting yourself. Okay, and the bad stuff that's happened to me is what? The stuff that has happened to you in this lifetime. Well, I'm seeing pictures of when you were a little girl, actually, and pictures of your mom combing your hair and, I don't know, just stuff about other people creating you in their idea of what was acceptable versus how you might have preferred to be yourself kind of thing. And then feeling like being you, purely you, is not accepted. You have to be something else, otherwise you'll be judged in some way. Okay, okay. Do you, what about any next few years? Any changes? Anything going on? 
So this is up to you. You create your own reality. But from a spiritual growth perspective, it looks like you'll be, because you're working on opening your own aspect of self-love, you'll probably be creating situations for yourself that gives you opportunities to go into that. Okay. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Cheryl. Thank you for the call, Cheryl. I'll put you on hold so you can continue to listen. Tina. Hi, Tina. Yes, hi. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm, I guess I want to ask about a relationship with Robert, and maybe that'll tell me about um, my past life and um, my son's father, Lewis. Maybe I can find out their relationship and all of this. Okay, so your son's father is called Lewis, and, yes, and my boyfriend is Robert. And what's your son's name? Najam. N a j m. Take a look at you, Tina, in the current life. Gosh, you look like a real firecracker. (laughs) 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 Looks like you're midway through a a cycle which is um, a very active growth cycle, a very creative growth cycle where you're, it just looks like expressing your creativity in as many ways as possible kind of thing. So I'm going to look for a past life. Okay, I've got um, one that's quite far down your personal timeline, so this will be an interesting one for us to look at. Okay, thank you. Well, it's funny. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, gosh, well, I hate to say this because it seems so stereotypical, but it's it's kind of like the archetypal caveman. <laughs> in, a, in a hairy male body, munching on a you know piece of meat kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, sitting by the fire. Uh, well, you know, I feel like it's, it's this hairy, this hairy mammoths about that you go hunting for and things like this. And and the one thing that I pick up about you is that you are really super alert. You know how some animals are super alert because their survival depends on it, or that you know they're out hunting something, so they need to look all around them and see everything and see any movement in the bushes because um, it could be danger. So there's that feeling about you. You're sort of like while you're eating, your eyes are darting everywhere. You're looking all around you. Locate any signs of danger or any opportunities as well. Very hypervigilant. (laughs) Hypervigilant, yes, yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> Tina's busted. <laughs> I am busted. I'm like, I haven't said one word in there describing me. I'm thinking I'm trying, to meditate. I'm trying to meditate and calm it down and everything. Like, okay, they got me. <laughs> uh, well, you called the right show. We don't play around here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you Captain Caveman. Remember that commercial, that cartoon? <laughs> Cat and Caveman. I'm so embarrassed because I don't know why I have that much energy. (laughs) But it is true, because that's exactly what I was seeing in the current lifetime as well. It's just like a ton of energy and all over the place and doing all sorts of stuff kind of thing. So, yeah, it's the same kind of a a vibe. Um, Anyway, let's see see what he does apart from looking around. (laughs) Yes, I just want to know about marriage with Robert. (laughs) Well, let's see if Robert's in this past life anywhere. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it looks like he is. And I'm not seeing him clearly yet. I'm seeing his energy, but I'm not seeing the body that he was in. The feeling I'm getting is that he was a wise person that you mm-hmm. visited to ask questions of and receive wisdom from. So it looks like he's not somebody that's part of your little group, but he's somebody that you might from time to time travel to because he has special knowledge that you don't have in some way. Yes, he's the opposite. He's not fiery like me, that's true. 
<laughs> yeah, and 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 actually, yeah, the, the energy is very calm um, <laughs> and stable. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, anyway, so that's the, the what's coming up is that, and I'll see whether Lewis, your um, father, was in this lifetime. Yeah. I and it looks like he was as well, um, but he was part of your tribal group. I'm actually seeing, I'm getting the, the, the sense of him running circles around you. It's almost like he might have been one of your children or something, but I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. seeing like running circles around you, giving you a run for your own money kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> I'll see if your son's here too. Yes, yeah, so you see me clobbering him with a piece of meat? <laughs> no, but I, I'm, I'm seeing that he also was a child of yours. Yes, he is a child. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my son. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So he, he, I'm seeing him be a bit of your, you know, your offspring, your baby in this lifetime. So isn't this interesting? Because this lifetime is a really long, 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 long time ago, and yet here are three characters that are in your life today. Because that's like we were saying earlier. They're part of your soul group. It looks like you've had. Many lifetimes with these different characters being up and in and out is uh, playing different roles to one another. Oh, mm -hmm. beautiful. Can I add something to this? Um, getting a very strong <laughs> feeling. Um, and Dr. Leslie, if you want to dovetail with me on this concept, but when I think of Robert in that past life, I hear the word and I feel it. I hear the word stolen. And it's as if Robert in the past life felt that she was stolen from him when Aww. he was in love with her. And somebody else won your heart or won your love, and, and he was very hurt by this. Oh, so in wow. this lifetime, he feels like he finally won the prize. That you're oh. like his queen, like he finally... He's finally on the other side, and he's a winner. There's win and loss and stolen, and he finally gets his heart's desire. Does that feel, does that resonate with you, Dr. Leslie? I feel so strong. Yeah, you're, you're reading a different lifetime now. You're reading a more recent lifetime, um, wow. and um, it looks like it's a lifetime Similar to the one we read for somebody in the French court, but it's not the French court, but it's in Europe, and it's at the time where the nobility would be making arranged marriages. And mm -hmm. it looks like you were in a female body, very beautiful, but highly marketable, um, sort of like a princess of, of some kind. I feel like it might have even been the Russian court, but but it's like um, you d d they didn't marry for love. They married for political arrangements. And oh, I'm wow. seeing that, um, I'm seeing that you, you and Robert loved one another, but it wasn't possible for you to be married because of his station in life was not equivalent to yours, and because they married you for a political alliance to somebody from a neighboring kingdom of some kind that so that it's like now the two families are together and, you know, they're, therefore there's cooperation between our nations kind of thing. And so, yeah, that's a lifetime that Charlotte's picking up. And I'm seeing mm -hmm. he was absolutely bereft. He, he was. He, he loved you so much and he, it, it broke him to lose you. But he, are you saying that he was affluent or he was not affluent? He was a what? He was affluent, are you saying? No, he's... Yeah, um, the, yeah affluent. Did he have money? No. Well, was, I, well, hang on. I'm seeing he had... He did have some money, but but not... It, it's more about... You know how royalty goes. There's, like, different hierarchy, isn't it? You know, and, and you were on a higher echelon, a higher rung of that hierarchy than he oh. was. It's like you'd be a princess and he'd be, like, maybe some kind of lieutenant in the army or something like that. So he wasn't poor, but he certainly wasn't uber rich, and he certainly wasn't royalty either. 
it looks like he was some kind of soldier that was stationed in the palace that had some duties in terms of guarding and keeping the royal family safe. And that's how you got to know him. And he was quite young and you were a teenage girl growing up and you had a crush on him and you get to know one another and he fell in love with you. You fell in love with him, but then there's no way that that could have been allowed to be a marriage because of who you each were. Yeah. Um, and then Jesus, that is very interesting. That's what I was thinking because I was saying he's affluent now. So that's I was like, wow, oh, yeah, he's healthy now. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for your patience. What's your name? You've been waiting a while. Oh, uh, well, it's worth a while, I'm sure. Oh, My good. name is Cheyenne, and I'm calling Hi. from Denver, Colorado, ladies. I would love to know how my present situation um, today stands with uh, maybe a past life um, and, um, you know, how it relates to each other and where I'm at today, you know, compared to maybe a lifetime that I lived before, and whatever you come up with would be um, wonderful. I'm okay. 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 What, what right, aspect Diane. is it? Relationship, lay, uh, relationships work? Um, yeah, relationship. Um, okay. Yes. Okay, Diane. So um, is there a particular present time relationship or relationship situation that you're referring to when you steer is in that direction? Yes. Um, definitely um, with a, a person I'm living with now, um, I know that I have had many lifetimes probably with this person, and I want to know how it's currently affecting, mm -hmm. you know, my my past okay. lifetimes with him and what the reason is for, what is my what is my purpose. And what's his first name? His name is Dave. Dave. Okay. All right, we'll take a look at that. We'll look at you in present time reality first. I feel like you're in a cycle right now that, that's like searching for answers. Searching for answers. Um, well, I know actually you just said that, didn't you? Life purpose. Yeah, because it, 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 it's like you're sort of really wide open uh, with asking question. you know, what's the... What's the meaning of my life? But I'm seeing that part of what you're doing when you're doing that is that you're not realizing that you actually already have the answer to that. So you're opening your, yourself up to all sorts of other energies and opinions on what that might be, and that's confusing you. And so turning within to just focus on what you know about you, I'm seeing would be more helpful for you. Anyway, that said, let's look for a past life that relates to that and that might also have Dave in it. Okay, and one comes up which is about a third of the way down your timeline and I'm seeing you be in a female body and you are a herbalist and you are in a, it's a lovely garden. It feels like it's in the grounds of a chateau or a manor house or something and um, you know it's a it's a medicinal herb garden beautifully laid out and deliberately planted with the medicinal herbs of the day and you work in this castle or chateau or mansion whatever it is you work you you work well, it feels like they've got both a culinary herb garden and a medicinal herb garden. But your expertise is definitely in herbalism. And so if anyone is ill in any way, you come up with, you know, a potion or a lotion wow. or a tincture or something that will help them with their issue. And I'm seeing it's not just medicinal things it's even like I don't know little love potions you make like a little sachet of herbs for somebody to carry around with them um, <laughs> you know <laughs> so there's a little I need bit of my a, own <laughs> <laughs> little bit of so, magic so, as well 
basically she was a metaphysician like us. Yeah, yeah, with a special, with an expertise in herbs and healing. And seeing that what you did crossed over a little bit into the kitchen in that, you know, sometimes you'd give the cook advice about, well, if you just add this herb in with <laughs> this dish, at the same, you know, it will help with this and at the same time be delicious kind of thing. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I do that now. Let me, <laughs> yeah. So let me see, um, I'm looking for Dave in this life now. So, um, Dave is also somebody who lives in this place and he is, he looks more like he'd be kind of like a footman or somebody, something like that. Somebody who is Upstairs and downstairs, you know, somebody who's, well, is he a footman or does he look after one of the gentlemen in the house? That's more a different name, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, he he works there like you do. Mm -hmm. And you're both kind of middle-aged at the time that I'm looking at you. And mm. it looks like it's the sort of classic sort of servant's quarters arrangement. But um, you have... Actually, you have your own sort of special room for all your concoctions. It's like a little medieval laboratory. And so it looks like you sleep in your special room. It's like a little bench that you sleep on there. And so so lucky for you, you're outside of the main servants' quarters and outside of the gaze of people who might gossip and so I'm seeing that you and the footman had a friendship and that your friendship became more than a friendship and that you yeah, know because she looks like you were tre treating him for <laughs> something so you're rubbing herbs onto his back you know <laughs> uh -huh. and um, I don't know it just seemed like you know the physical contact and all of that and ju it just one thing led to another and you became lovers, and so um, and you had a great situation there with your little uh, laboratory that was sort of set <laughs> up away from the rest of the servants' quarters. And, and I'm seeing that this actually this relationship carried on for many years between you. It wasn't out in the open for some reason. I guess it just wasn't mm -hmm. the way things were supposed to be. But um, but yeah. Let me see if there's anything. No, I'm I'm seeing something else here. For some reason, I'm seeing you deliver a baby. It's not your baby, so I don't know why I'm seeing it. So just give me a moment. It looks like this is also part you you participated in sort of midwifery and this kind of thing as well. Well, what I'm what I'm being told is that it looks like he was a widower and he had been married and he had children looks like you were never married and you didn't have children and you knew how to take care of not having children as well because of your herbal knowledge but and so that's part of the reason also why you kept it secret was because he had grown children but i'm seeing that his daughter had a baby and you delivered his daughter's baby and somehow she had complications to do with her pregnancy and so as the story evolved, you were able to tend to her and save her and look after her and save the baby. It looks like the, the, the baby wasn't well when it was born and you, you looked after it and, and, and made it actually be okay. Uh -huh. and so, and so then the, you be, you, you became, you knew the rest of the family then after that. You became a friend of, a dear friend of the family after that. Uh -huh. So it, it was a, it was a very long and lovely relationship that you had. It's interesting if I go back to, you know, originally looking at you and this searching for meaning, you had so much depth of meaning in that life and you knew what your life purpose was. I wonder if there's any, is there any interest in herbs and herbalism or aromatherapy or anything like that in the current life? Oh, yes, definitely. I love plants and, um, you know, I definitely am a teacher um, in many modalities as far as, you know, giving of myself and information if I can help somebody. Um, and, uh, 
you know, um, as far as gardening, I love it and all that. And everything that you said was so right on, yes. Um, it, but like I said, I need a love potion. I need a love potion <laughs> because I love Dave. I have been with him as a friend for over 25 years in this lifetime. I've dealt with so much from him, but yet I've grown so much from the, the things that he's put me through and whatever. And now that we're older, I want him to love me as he used to love me. And I sort of keep getting rejected. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, living with a person now because of, um, you know, certain circumstances have brought us back together. But now it's hard dealing with the person who loves, cares for me as, you know, as if he's watching over me, but not as a lover anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm really having a hard time dealing with that because I want that back. Yeah, and it, it actually looks like, um, you know, I mean, it's probably what I'm going to say doesn't sound very helpful, but it's not you, it's him. I mean, it looks like he's going through some of his own internal stuff. Yes. And it looks like he doesn't feel that way about you because he doesn't feel that way about himself. And it yes. looks like he's feeling depressed. Um, about some things and yes. it looks like he's just not even dealing with getting older and life moving on so well yeah. and it looks yeah. like he's quite judgmental about himself as well so he judges yes. himself for the way that he is and it's a self-perpetuating nosedive into and it's, it's so, hard because what can you do because, I know what he's it, going through you know what I mean mm -hmm. he's going through a lot of court cases and a lot he's dealing with but he's not a person that talks so I said to him you know if it's not me please tell me it's not me you know what I mean and I try to be his backbone he he tries to be mine but you know that you know we have been together so many times in this lifetime and I'm grateful that now that I'm older I want to be there for him and I want him to be there for me so um now clarifying that you know yes Diane instead of looking at yourself and being so selfish and stop thinking that he's the one being selfish maybe I ought to look at both angles and just be as welcoming as I can but he is very judgmental yes yeah. 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 Well, do you have any hits on the relationship, Shaw? Oh no, I've been doing some technical stuff, but I do feel oh, okay. his. I do feel his uh, withdrawal and um, pessimism, and just it kind of like he's given up. That you know, whatever whatever these yeah. scenarios are that he's going through, he just feels like throwing in the towel. He's tired. Yeah. So very yep. tired. I'm tired too. Yes. Yeah, and and I feel exhausted, and I feel like what's the point, and and suicidal thoughts, and it's um very dark, a very dark place, and but you know it's one of those you know you think about it, but you don't have the courage to do it, and you wouldn't do something like that, but it is yes. that difficult for him, and it's making yes. it that difficult for you, and yes. emotionally it feels, and you tell me, but it feels and looks to me like he's siphoning energy from you just to survive. Oh my God. Oh, my God, yes. Just to survive. Well, he's a narcissist. He's a narcissist, so okay. he definitely sucks the life out of me, and I feel it, and I have been so severely depressed myself. Okay. But, um, you know, it's just getting on talk, blog talk radio and, and reaching out to people to clarify, to, um, mm -hmm. you know, very intuitive. Uh, I want to learn about my own gifts and expand my own consciousness and what... I know is real. Then continue um, and listening to the show because we present I continue all of that. To everybody, you know what I mean? And that yeah. is my getaway. That is my learning, which okay. in essence I give out to people. Well, yeah. here's I what think, I would suggest. You know, I would suggest you get a session with Dr. Leslie because with him siphoning your energy, there's a definite chakra issue because uh -huh. that's where he's getting your energy from is out of your chakras. And... Dr. Leslie can take you through a session to help you protect yourself. And oh, when yeah. you change inside you, the law of energy is that Dave will change. He can't avoid okay. it. 
Dr. Leslie? Okay. Yeah, the only other thing I wanted to say, just because the theme of the show is past lives, this, this um, Diane's example is gives us another um, point to make, and that is that sometimes I see what will come up with a past life is a past life where you had uh, a gift, something that you could do really, really well, and it's possible to plug and play that gift in the present lifetime, right? So sometimes a past life will come up because it's telling you a gift or an ability that you have. So it, and you wouldn't have to learn it all over again in this lifetime. You just have to tap into what you already know because you already developed that ability. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, I thank you so much today for taking your time with me. You're live on the air. Hi, what is your name? Hi, my name is Catherine. Catherine. Hello, Catherine. With a K? With a K. Okay. And what is your question for Dr. Leslie? It'll be a little more abbreviated than the other readings, but we'll do our sure. best. Well, my question is about being hungry, food and being hungry. Like, I grew up, my mom was very great and cooked us homemade meals every night after work, and I never had any food issues as a child, but when I get hungry, it's like my body goes into like a panic, like my, it doesn't like getting hungry, so I just wonder if there's some past life about being in starvation, or I don't know where that comes from. That's a really, really interesting question. I love All it. All right, so let's take a look. I'm seeing that there's energetically in the current body some kind of issue going on in the solar plexus chakra. The sh that's the chakra that deals with energy distribution, you know, and it may be that there's something going on uh, metabolically in the physical body as well. But I will look and see if there's a past life also. There's so many different opportunities on this planet to have different kinds of experiences. And, of course, absolutely, you have had past lives where you've gone hungry and there's an, actually right. a number of them lighting up, and I'll choose one of them just to get a glimpse into. Yeah, I'm seeing you in a male body and you're very emaciated. It's a long time ago, um, but it reminds me of some of the photographs we see from the uh, concentration camps in the Second World War, mm. that type of emaciation. But it's not at that time. It's much further away in time and your skin is brown and you're in a um, bit more of a southern location. feels like might be in India somewhere. Well, what I'm seeing is that you have been um, captured for some reason and are being punished for some reason. And it looks like they have you in shackles at the bottom of a, I feel like it's a temple wall or something. And, and you, you're basically sitting there wasting away. And to see if I can see what, what you did to get yourself into that kind of a situation you defiled the temple <laughs> you defiled the temple you defiled the temple and you were caught defiling the temple and then you were placed at the bottom of the temple um to pay kind of a penance and why we why you were defiling the temple was that you you were questioning the belief system you were questioning god it looks like some difficult things have happened in your life and you said, well, as, as often we do, well, there can't be a God then if something so dreadful as this can happen, uh, you know. And so, you know, in a fit of um, anger and pain and all of that, you scratched off some symbols and urinated on the temple wall and you were caught and put down there and left to starve. So, um so starvation in that past life is directly linked to you expressing your grief and your emotional pain and um, and also your, um, well, questioning your spiritual beliefs as well. And does that have anything to do with right now in the current lifetime? 
Not so not that I could see. Well, probably mm. my parents didn't uh, really express much. Like we grew up in kind of a quiet household that we didn't really talk yeah. about things like that. I could see that. Yeah. Well, yeah, so it's almost seen with like a cloud over it. It's almost like you haven't decided what it is that you believe about it. But anyway, yeah, I feel like with the question of the hunger, there's that some definite stuff with respect to energy distribution in the body, and you just might want to get that checked out energetically by a, an energy healer, and you right. might even want to take, go to the physician as well and just have some, you know, see if everything in your metabolism is functioning as it should. Right. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to another Unlocking Your Truth podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. For more information, go to her website at drleslieyphillips.com. That's drlesliephillips.com, where you can ask questions or send her an email. And there's many free gifts on there for you as well. Come back again.